Good morning. It's the Steve Sisler Show. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, listen, I got a graph that came through this morning, and I thought it was important that I share some thoughts about it. Um, just to assist people in the day and age that we live in, uh, in the entrepreneurial world, um, I was going to say entrepreneurial space, but my brother hates when I say that. <laughs> I think the word space is getting overused. <laughs> anyway, um, so here's the deal. Um, we got a lot of programs out there online that generally focus on, you know, how you can, uh, you know, work from home, not work at a place anymore, um, do what you love, uh, make a million dollars, all these different things. And there's a lot of chat groups and Facebook groups and where you got people just pouring into these groups because, you know, they want to escape the nine to five and join the new rich to take a line from Tim Ferriss, whom I love, by the way. Um, but um, uh, here's the hard facts. <laughs> uh, not everybody can do that. Um and for some reason, I guess it's, it's disadvantageous to uh, uh, the people selling these courses and trying to get you to sign up to be the next wealthy person on the block. Um, uh, because they, 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 uh, what they do is they present this information as if, hey, anybody can do this. <laughs> you know, I used to shampoo dogs and now, you know... Uh, I'm making movies for Hollywood, (laughs) whatever the case may be. Um, So I want you to pay attention, um, especially if you're one of those people who has been entertaining the idea of leaving your work and working for yourself. (sighs) Okay, let's get let's get into this. Let's get the graph up. So uh, this is the graph that came through. um, And this is the person who had interest in working for themselves, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to reiterate all that. Um, So let's take a look at the mental energy of this person. Remember, the mental energy is concealed behavior. We call it concealed because it's unconscious behavior. It's not something we're thinking about. It's not something we may even really or entirely be aware of. Um, But it is the energy that we rely on Uh, in an effort to uh, uh, succeed and survive whatever environment we're in. Now, there's something you need to know about human character. It's fluid. Human character changes. It moves. Um, It's a goalpost that's not in the ground. Um, And so uh, if if when you're growing up, you're not allowed to use foul language at the house because your parents will, like in my day, wash your mouth out with soap. Crazy uh, thing. I, my mom, I don't think, ever did that, but my, my wife's mother did. Um, but just put a bar of soap in your mouth and scrape it on your teeth until your mouth's filled with flakes as if your mouth is, quote, dirty. Um, thank God that falls under the category of abuse now. Uh, but anyway, off of that... Um, but uh, so when you go to school, you know, you might choose more colorful words than you would at home simply because you got to now fit into this environment. You don't want to look like, you know, one of those people. So this is how our brains function. Does that mean you're a bad person and deceptive and all that? No, it doesn't. It means you're trying to succeed and survive your environment. Um, oh God, I, I anyway, let's move past that because that's a whole nother topic. Um, But anyway, so back to um, the human behavior piece here for this individual. So this individual would like to, you know, get out in the world and make their own way and not have to depend on anybody else for income and things like that. Okay, Uh, is that going to happen? No, (laughs) it's likely not going to happen. 
Um, why? Well, I want you to. I, I, I want you to look at this. All right. Um, uh, if you're familiar with the DISC model, these are the four primary emotions: anger, optimism, patience, and fear. Anger, optimism, patience, and fear. All together now. Anger, optimism, patience, and fear. Okay? Mad, glad, sad, scared. So we got a sad, scared here. We've got somebody who relies on patience and fear for everything. Um, and uh, anger and optimism are not... There's no energy there. Okay? Um, so there's no consistency. There's no energy. Why? Because it's below the 50% point, which is the mental energy line. When you cross the line of mental energy moving into um, 51, 2, 3, all the way up to 100, then your brain begins to rely on these particular mental energies for doing things in the world. Now, I call this the barred castle. Um, so what does that mean? Well, um, we need to move over to the solution action piece. So graph one is always intended behavior. What does that mean? It means it's what we intend to do. It means this is the behavior I'm doing on purpose. Th this I know I'm doing. This I'm doing on purpose. This is an actual plan um, that I've come up with in my mind in an effort to succeed and survive my current state of affairs, my current environment, which is my work. Whatever you're doing in the day-to-day, -day, okay? You know, how are you spending your available time? That's what intended, where intended behavior comes into play. Okay. Um, so if we look at TARP, Okay, what is TARP? TARP is what we call taking, attracting, responding, and preserving. Taking, let's look at taking. The taking orientation on the intended behavior of this person is a two. Okay, so that's not a big number. <laughs> okay, it's a small number. So the energy to take what I want in the world go get what i want kill it and drag it home i want you to think about getting dinner uh hey stewart um i want you to think about getting dinner uh think about the caveman days you know you get out of your cave you got your spear or your rock or whatever the heck you're using and you go out there and you're looking at a saber-toothed tiger and you're trying to figure out okay i want to eat that so how's this going to transpire um, so you figure out a plan and you attack and kill, let's say, the saber-toothed tiger, Rambo style. Um, and then you drag the thing home. Uh, that would be taking. So what would that look like on an energy scale? It'd probably be like a 98 anger, 98 dominance, um, attack, right? We call that the jungle fighter. Um, so, you know, that's somebody who has a lot of energy when it comes to making things happen that won't happen on their own. Okay, well, what if you're a two? Well, you can't make anything happen. What's the opposite of taking? Responding. Okay, responding. So the opposite of red is green. Okay, so we have a lot of responsive behavior here because we have a lot of patience going on in the brain. So... Do, do responsive people make things happen? No, they hope, they hope things will happen. They hope. Fingers crossed. I hope that saber-toothed tiger walks into the trap I set. Yeah, and if it doesn't, you're going to go hungry. Okay, <laughs> all right? You're going to go hungry because... You can't make anything happen. You hope it happened. What about preserving the P and TARP? What about preserving behaviors? What do they do? They doubt things will happen. Okay, so now we've got this person who's entertaining the idea of going into business for themselves and working from home. What are their main energies? You ready? Hope and doubt. That's the main energy. Hope and doubt. Good or bad? Neither. It has nothing to do with good or bad. 
but if you're trying to start a business, it's not, it's certainly not helpful. Okay. Now this is where people are really screwing other people up on the internet. They got these people in a group and they're saying, just do what I did. Just get this together. Just make these phone calls. Just fill out this form and buy my book and do this and do that. And you'll be as successful as I am. You know what that is? That's just untrue. Okay. It's untrue. If that's the case, start a business today. Check in with me in three months and let me know how it's going. Okay. Now, this is a fantasy. This is not true. And let me say it. I'm going to say it right here loud and clear. This, my friends, is malpractice. It's malpractice. When you're telling everybody, you can do what I did if you follow these steps. That is the stupidest, most ignorant thing you could say to somebody. If everyone in the world was you, that would be true. But they're not. And if you can get over yourself for five minutes just to think about the precious people out there that you're luring into your sales funnel uh, and getting their hopes up, it pisses me off. Um, I kind of ranting right now, so I don't normally do that if you watch my videos, but I am hot about this topic. It's driving me crazy because I got to help all these folks. You people are screwing up. Um, so, so, so don't give me just do this, read my book and you're going to be some kind of a trillionaire. Um, it's just not true. It is not true. All right. Now, does this mean this person can't make money? No, it doesn't. It means they're not going to make money like that ever. Okay. The odds of that happening slim to none. Okay. So we're, 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 let's go back to the concealed behavior. The natural character base is full of hope and doubt. Okay. What does that look like? Let me build you an image. Think about a human being living in a rock solid castle, okay, with 12 inch thick block rock walls, all right, with windows with bars on them that are like this wide, just enough to fit an arrow through, with a giant drawbridge, a giant bolted door like King Kong movie, all right, a moat around the entire castle with gators in it okay so that's what i call the barred castle nothing comes in nothing comes out it, otherwise known as the dead sea if you've read my behavior book um uh, the four people types and what drives them um you can get that on amazon, <laughs> <on> amazon. <laughs> and you get all this here for not a lot of money trust me uh 300 some odd pages of it so anyway um uh, uh so we got we got this barred castle. Nothing comes in, nothing goes out. The Dead Sea. You know, they're always hooking up with the Jordan River, by the way. Um, uh, so the point I'm making is um, because of this uh, no non-exchange between outside and inside forces, what you've got is heavy, 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 heavy reliance on outside sources and inciting incidents to move this character forward in the world. Okay. What does that mean? Well, remember the movie Star Wars. Remember Luke Skywalker. We're going all the way back to the first movie in 1978 or 9 or whenever that was. But the first movie, Luke wants to be a Jedi master and, you know, go to Jedi school and uh, be like his father. Well, does he do anything about it? No, he can't. He can't. So what does he do? You know, you remember that scene early in the film when Luke goes outside at dusk and he puts his foot up on the rock and he leans on it with his elbow and he looks off into the outer space and he's just dreaming of what could be. And you got the two sons kind of, you know, you know, moving down behind the horizon and the music's playing and you're like, oh, it's dreamland. And you're just watching him hope and wish that things were different, but he has no energy to make things different. None, none at all, okay? His uncle, who's dominant, his aunt, who's passive, 
are sitting at the table and he says, you know, I want to go to the academy. I'd like to do this. I'd like to do that. And his uncle just looks at him and says, I want you for another season. You're not going anywhere. Okay, number one, you're not my father. You're my uncle. Number two, I'm like 22 uh, and I can do what I want. Do you think he's thinking that way? He's not thinking that way. He's thinking like he's four. He's thinking like he lives in a playpen, and unless uncle lets me out, I ain't going anywhere. And so he gets really frustrated, and he's just sitting there, and he's sulking at the table, and then the passive aunt just you know, looks at the father, you know, looks at the uncle, looks at Luke. She doesn't know what to do, so what does she do? She remains neutral right and then luke gets up and leaves she's like you know you got to think about your nephew blah blah he goes no i need him for another season shuts her down right away why he's a taker he's trump all right so this is what happens so what does luke do he goes down into the cellar if you want to call it that underground with his little droids who are extremely safe right this is what people do in work when they face terrible circumstances, they huddle down with safe people and they all get together and lick each other's wounds, okay? Um, and and that's, that's what Luke's doing. And he's kicking stuff around, you know, and he's wishing things were different, but he can't do anything because he has no taking orientation. In other words, he's not an angry guy, all right? He's not Han Solo. So he just, he just, he's stuck. He can't do anything. Oh, Luke, why don't you go start a business? Read my book and do what I did. You'll be a trillionaire by fall, right? Hell no, that's not going to happen. So what does Luke do? Anyway, circumstances lead to one thing or another. He ends up leaving and then going back to his house. And what, what happened? His aunt and his uncle have perished in a fire and their skeletal remains are laying out smoking in the front yard right and then everything changes why because this is an inciting incident from the outside world that moves the character luke forward in the story where luke can't move himself he's an immovable object in a world that is not at his demand but he is subject to Okay, these styles, look at the top left-hand corner of the screen there. These styles are subject to the world. What is it called? It's called outer directed. Outer direction. Outer directed people depend, depend on outside sources and outside inciting incidents to move them forward in their life story. Without them, they're not going anywhere. Okay? That's how it works. And this, my friends, is science. It's behavior. It's predictable. All right? So now we've got this person here who cannot move without this outsiding incident. They're living in a barred castle. Nothing comes in. Nothing goes out. Okay? They have no weapons. They look in the closet. They got a mop. That's it. No guns, no knives, no swords, no shields, nothing. All right. So what does that mean? If it isn't safe, I'm not going outside. Okay. So what am I telling you? Patience, emotions are safety driven. People with high patience are driven by safety concerns. People with high fear motions, emotions are driven by what could go wrong, not what could go right. Okay. Good or bad. Neither. We need these people. Okay. But they're not running around starting businesses and making millions of dollars. Does that mean you? I've never seen anybody like this in a business? No, I have seen people like this in a business. But if you knew the whole story of how this happened, it would make sense to you, and I don't have time to go into it. But um, uh, uh, you need to just stay focused on the fact that the odds of that happening are not there. They're just not there unless you've got special circumstances. Okay, so this person lives in a barred castle. Nothing comes in, nothing goes out. Now, what can, what can they do? If they want to work from home, they've got to, they've, they can only receive it from an outside source. Why? Because responsive people are in TARP, right? right wait a minute, right, right up, uh, right up there. <laughs> okay, responsive people believe that all good things lie outside of themselves, but they can only be received from an outside source. So if nobody walks over the moat, over the drawbridge, knocks on the door, 
They look through the little hole like in Wizard of Oz to see that it's safe. They open the door, just a little crack, and they look through with their eye, okay? They look through and say, are you safe? And they're like, yeah, I'm safe. And then they give them something like a gift, then they can't have it, okay? If they can't receive it from an outside source, they're not able to go get it. So if I don't bring the food to you, you can't go out and kill it, right? You don't have the energy for that, nor should you with this kind of a behavioral profile. And it's not about good or bad. It's about, do you have the energy to go out and kill animals and bring them home? No, you don't, okay? Then why are you telling me I can do whatever I want? All right, that's stupid. It's insane. Um, so this person, I know for a fact, is discouraged, confused, because she's been in this online face group, book group and everybody's chiming in, prayers, you can do it, blah, blah, blah. Okay, maybe well-intentioned, right? Ignorant, but well-intentioned. And this person's like, what is wrong with me? Okay, number one, there's nothing wrong with you. This is how you're wired, all right? You're a paintbrush, and everybody's telling you you can be a screwdriver. So you take your paintbrush, and you're trying to turn the screw, and you're wondering why nothing happens. This is how behavior works. All right. This is how emotions drive behavior. Um, and so uh, this person's got a lot of assets here, but we're not talking about those on this on this video. We're talking about the problems and challenges that come with thinking and believing other people's report about your capacity to do something in the world. Um, so what this person needs to do is realize that that's not what I do. And that's fine. You have to embrace who you are instead of sitting in your house and crying about who you want to be. That's where the trouble starts. Um, you can't do that. All right. So now uh, I, I want to get off that for a second and I want to bring up their motivational orientation. Okay. Same person's motivational orientation. Hello. Wow. This is incredible. Um, so what we got going on here, I want you to pay attention to the individualism here. Um, the individualism is the highest. It's a 79. Okay. That's really high on a hundred scale. Um, so the most important thing to this person is being a unique individual with freedom and autonomy. I wonder why they're thinking about freedom all the time, right? Well, is it any wonder they live in a barred castle? They can't go out. It isn't safe, right? They want to be free, but can't get out. All right. What about their compliance orientation here? It's low, which means even though they have a fear of errors and mistakes, they dream about breaking the rules. But it's only a dream. It's a fantasy. It's not going to happen. All right. These are the people that dream about driving a, driving a Hummer, but come home with, you know, uh, a Toyota Camry. Um, uh, you know, uh, these are the people that fantasize about what could be, uh, but lack the energy to make certain things happen. All right. Um, look at the power orientation. It's a 35 out of 100. What is power? Authority, control. Authority and control, right? This is about taking control of my life. This is about saying, get the hell out of that car. I'm driving. Get out or get in the back, do something, but I'm driving. Does this person do that with their life? No, they don't. Who's driving their car? Everybody else but them, all right? They don't drive their own car. They don't even dream about driving their own car. They don't know how to drive their own car. They don't have a license, okay? Good or bad? Well, it's bad if you want to go somewhere, all right? It's not bad if you want to, if something comes to you, it's great, Um. And so if you're on a team and you're cooperating, great, it's perfect, all right? So I don't want you to think that there are good and bad graphs. There are not. Good and bad is only in proportion to what you want to do, who you want to do it with, and who you want to do it for. That's what changes the game, okay? So here um, we've got a freedom seeker who's chained to the wall in a castle, now, um, working from home, yeah, would work for this person because emotionally they don't leave home. Um, but if nothing comes to them, then it's going to be difficult. So what does this person need? This person needs to be around people that have more connections than they've got. 
and they need to be talented. They need to be really good at something. Because if you're really good at something, people will find it and use it. They'll find you and use you. If you're good at what you do, then you're going to be in demand because people want good quality talent. If you're not talented, you're in trouble. Okay, I'm just being honest. You, you know, nobody goes to the doctor and the doctor sees that you've got stage three melanoma and he says, well, you know, let me give you the pluses. He's like, listen, if you don't do this, you're going to die. Okay, and that's the way I do this. That's the way if you come to me because you want answers, that's the kind of answer you're going to get if this is the kind of graph you have. Because I'm not going to feed you a line so you can pay me nice money and then I'm going to set you on your merry way, pat you on the head like Jojo and send you out into the world just to be destroyed by it. Um, I want you to live in the real world, your own real world. Be happy with who you are instead of fantasizing about everybody else you want to be like. And then capitalize on all your assets and all your strengths because you have them. We all do. Every single person has earning power built in. It's we're listening to every other voice but our own. So anyway, I don't want to uh, uh, go on and on. Uh, 26 minutes. I want to keep this kind of short. Um, uh, I'm all sweaty and worked up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, I'm getting dizzy. So anyway, um, listen. There's so many funnels out there, um, you know, and they're not good funnels. I mean, think, remember Star Wars again. Remember that funnel in the desert? With, you didn't know it was actually a critter, and it was like a worm under the, under the earth, and it had all these weird spikes, and you fall in, and you really can't get out. A lot of these sales funnels out there, folks, are nothing but basically Venus flytraps um, because they have their own bank account in mind usually, not you. Okay, are there some out there that really care about people? Sure, sure. I'm sure there are. But trust me, more of them care about themselves, okay, and not other people. Um, hey, Stuart, awesome, buddy. Glad you liked it. Um, so, so be aware of that. The only person who can care about you in the most appropriate way is you. And if you're not doing it, trust me, not many other people are doing it for you. Um, and if you have a profile like this and you're struggling, then I suggest you get some help, get somebody in your corner that understands you and that can help you push through to the reality that you're actually living in so that you can embrace it with all your heart and capitalize on it and be happy. Um, so that's it. Steve Sisler signing off. Um, and, uh, we'll catch you next time and it's Monday. So have a, a great week and we will connect soon.